Today we'll be taking a look at this two-person outer frame tent that Nightcat sent me to review. Now first in the video, we'll take an overview of the tent both outside and inside, and I'll show you all of the major features of it. And then later in the video, I'll show you how I put this up and took it down. Now obviously this one is the khaki or sort of brown color on the outside with gray trim on the inside but there is also a green version available in case you don't like this color. Now, of course, the most unique thing about this tent is the outer frame. And what that allows us to do with this tent is set up just the rain fly if we don't want to have sort of the inner body or screen part of the tent. And that may be useful if you're going to the beach and you just want sort of a sunshade and you want to keep everything open and you don't want to track sand, you know, inside the bottom of the tent, you can just set up the rain fly. And the other unique thing about that, and we'll take a closer look at this in a minute, is the fact that you can actually set it up like this fully and then decide later to take the inner kind of body away. And you can do that without having to tear anything down. You can leave it all set up just like it is now. So now let's take a closer look at some of the details and features on this tent. Starting at the top of the tent, you can see that the tent frame is made out of these aluminum poles. Now there's a unique feature here with this hub that's in the middle of the frame that provides support right at the direct top of the tent to keep everything kind of nice and up and tight so the rainwater will hit this thing and run off of the sides of the rain fly. Another unique feature about this tent are reflective strips that are placed in the middle of all of the straps that clip the rain fly onto the tent frame. If you've left your tent at night and need to find it in the dark, if you've got a flashlight and shine it anywhere in the direction of this tent, these things will reflect and help you easily find it. And the material of the rainfly and the tent floor is 210T PU 3000 millimeter. And that should provide pretty decent weather protection and durability for a tent in this price point. Now if we take a look at all the seams, you can see they're all cut nice and straight with no kind of extra material or loose threads. Everything is double stitched, nice and tight here. And on the back of the seams, there is seam sealer. Now this tent has doors and vestibules on both sides of the tent. And that allows for some extra room to store your backpack or maybe some muddy boots. So you don't have to haul that stuff inside the tent and have it take up room or in the case of the muddy boots, <laughs> dirty up the floor. Now either of the vestibule doors can be the one that's kind of staked out and fixed, but only one of the doors has this vent in it. So that's probably the one that you're gonna to wanna to stake out and leave in the fixed position. And then the other one, as you can see behind me, can be kind of rolled up and out of the way if you wanna have access to the tent. Here's another look at the vent on the vestibule door. You can see there's just sort of a hoop here to kind of keep it up so that the air can flow underneath. If we look under here, you can see there's just an opening. There's no screen behind it. Now if you decide that you wanna have the vestibule closed, you can just undo this clip strap that clips to the frame of the tent and just bring it out and zip it closed. And then here's another look at the door rolled up with the strap that's on the inside of the rain fly clipped to the tent frame. Now looking at the outer vestibule door, you can see there is a weather flap here to kind of seal up and cover the zipper. And then there's Velcro to kind of hold that in place so that if you're in a heavy rain, it's not gonna get in through the zipper. Now, speaking of the zipper for the vestibule door, it's a single zipper with just sort of a pull on it, but it seems of decent quality and doesn't bind or catch on the material. Now, looking at the inner part of the tent, there is a door on either side in the screen, but that door is sort of offset to this side. And that's another argument for staking out the side of the vestibule with the vent. But again, if you decided you wanted to do it opposite for some reason, you really could do that. So here we have a double zipper on the screen part of the tent. And that works nice and smooth. Again, just like with the vestibule zipper, there's no binding or anything catching on material with these zippers. They seem pretty decent. So starting up at the top of the tent, there is a hook for your lantern or whatever you might want to hang up here. And if we start looking down the tent, you can see that most of the body of this tent is the no -seam, uh screen mesh almost all the way down to the bottom of the floor. So for that reason, I would consider this tent probably not a four season tent, maybe three season at best. But on the flip side, on those hot summer nights, you're gonna get plenty of ventilation with the amount of room between this screen and the rain fly up there. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that because the screen goes almost all the way to the floor, 
there is no sort of privacy layer like you might get on some tents where the nylon extends up to here. That means if you've got those vestibule doors open and you're laying down sleeping in here, people are going to still be able to see you. So if that's a concern, you'll want to keep those doors closed. There are no storage pouches or anything like that up on top of the tent. All of the storage pouches are at the four corners of the tent, as you can see here, and those are just made of uh, more screen material. Now, if we take a closer look at the floor of this tent, it's made out of the same material as the Rainfly. But you can see that it's also sort of a bathtub design. And what that means is that the material extends right to the corner and up with no seam right here. And what that hopefully means is that if you're in a wet condition, you're not going to get any water leaking in at the seam right there. Now having said that, there is a seam in the floor a little ways away from the corner, but it is double stitched and seam sealed, so it should be just fine especially if the rain fly is doing its job and keeping the weather out in the first place. Now if we look closer at the corners, you can see that they are all sort of double material reinforced, stitched up nice and tight, and definitely seam sealed in here as well. Now as I mentioned before, the inner body of the tent can be removed from the rain fly, even when it's set up like it is now. All you have to do is grab these dog bones and fish them through the rings that are in the side of the rain fly, and then this just kind of separates. But on the flip side, what that means is that you can't set up the inner screen part of the tent by itself. You've always got to have the rain fly so that you can hook these into it. If we take a look at one of the corners of the tent, you can see that the tent frame poles go into metal grommets sewn into the strap here. And then you can see there's sort of an orange cord that goes off to the tent stake. And then over here, there is a tensioning buckle that allows you to put tension on the rain fly right at the corners if you need to do that. And again, there's another dog bone and ring down here that would need to be removed if you were pulling out the tent body from underneath the rain fly. I'm not sure what the official name of this type of stake is, but you can see these are sort of the three-sided ones that are a little bit harder to bend than those wire ones that are supplied with other tents. Now, if we take a look about halfway up the rain fly on each of the four sides of the tent, there are sort of guy lines here that you can put out if you're in sort of a harsh weather condition. If you decide that you don't want to use the guy lines, you can actually tuck them up into these pockets so that they're out of the way and not dangling around where you can trip on them. I like this tent for a few different reasons. The first being, as I've already mentioned in the video, that you can set up just the rain fly as a standalone shelter if you don't want the screen part of the tent there. I can see that being useful at the beach, or maybe you want this sort of as a secondary tent or a shelter for your gear if you've got another tent that you plan on sleeping in. Something along those lines. Now this tent was fairly roomy inside given that it is a two-person tent. It's not the biggest one that I've been in, but it's also not the smallest. There's enough room inside for me at five foot six inches tall to kind of sit up comfortably and do what I need to do. It might get a little tight if you've got two people in the tent at the same time trying to kind of move around. But again, it's not the smallest two-person tent that I've been in. Now, one thing that's not included with this tent, and honestly isn't included with most tents, is a footprint. That's something that I like to throw underneath the tent to kind of protect the bottom of the floor if I'm on kind of rough ground. And it also gives me another layer of protection in case the ground is wet or maybe gets wet from rainwater seeping under it. I feel that this tent's design with the large amount of screen that's on the inner part of the tent is going to give good ventilation for those hot nights. But on the flip side, on those cold nights, it may lose a little more heat than a tent that has more sort of solid nylon up the sides and less screening. I like the fact that this tent packs up pretty small and is relatively light, light enough to use with a backpack. Now, having said that, this isn't something I'd probably take hiking on the Appalachian Trail, but for short backpacking trips, I think this will work out just fine. Now, overall, I feel that there's a lot of value here for the money. If you're new to outer frame tents and are looking to try one out without spending a ton of money to see if it's something that you like, I would suggest putting this one on your list of tents to consider. Fully packed up, the tent is about 
17 inches or so long, about six and three quarters inches high, and about six and a half inches wide. Weight of the tent with the pack and everything is somewhere around 5.7 pounds. You can see that there are some cinch straps on here so that we can pack this up and kind of cinch it up to make the packed footprint as small as possible. It'll come in handy if you're trying to do any backpacking with this tent. Now this isn't something that you're going to probably bring on the Appalachian Trail with you, but for short backpacking trips or if you're going with a second person and plan to share the tent, you can unpack it and divvy up parts of the tent to share the load. Now the material of the bag is the same that's used on the tent. I like the coloring scheme with the khaki and the gray on the sides. We've got a single zipper here with an orange pull so you can easily find it. And there are some thumb straps here so you can kind of hold those while you're zipping this thing shut. Inside the bag we of course have the setup instructions. And we've got all the tent pieces rolled up and strapped together here. So we'll undo that and spread out the tent and get it set up. Once I unroll the tent, Inside, I find the tent poles and a bag with some tent stakes. And if I unfold this, you can see the main tent body and the rain fly here. The rain fly is already attached to the tent body. I'm going to leave it that way, but you could take the rain fly off and set that up separately if you just wanted to use the rain fly as sort of a shelter. We're going to set up the whole tent to check out everything. Now I'm going to grab the tent poles and set up the frame. Now they of course come all bundled and folded up like this, but the poles do have shock cord in the middle, so they can easily be put together like that. So I've got the tent poles all put together and laid out on top of the tent. Now one thing I want to point out is there's this hub piece here that keeps everything sort of together. Now when I orient this on the tent, I'm going to put the hub roughly in the center of the tent, and I'm also going to orient it so the side with the little ball piece on it is facing down toward the tent body. I'm now going to grab each of the poles and lock them into the grommets at each of the corners of the tent. So when setting this up, I found that working with opposite corners first is a little bit easier and keeps the poles locked in the grommets a little better than trying to do poles on the same side. When I get to the third corner, I want to make sure that I sort of hold the frame upright while I bend this one into place. And then when I walk to the last corner, I just want to hold on to everything and keep it upright as I make my way over here. Now I'll grab all these clips that are on the outside of the rain fly and clip them to the frame poles like that. So now up here at the top of the tent where the hub is, I'm going to grab this clip that's in the very top center of the tent. I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to clip it onto the ball. Now that's going to lock into the ball like that, and now it can kind of pivot and swing around as it needs to, and the tent can kind of flex in the wind. Now I'll grab the remaining short tent pole, I'll grab one end, and I'll lock it into the grommet that's here above the door of the tent. Now I've got the pole placed on top of the frame, and I'm going to bend it slightly over while I find the grommet on the opposite side of the tent and lock the end in. Once I get that set, I can just attach the two clips on either side of the top. Now I'll grab the stakes that are supplied with the kit and stake out the tent. Now another thing I like about this style of tent peg is it has sort of a hook or a catch on it. So it's good for catching the strings that are on the four corners of this style of tent. I've got my first corner staked out over there closer to the camera. I'm just going to put some tension on the tent here, grab my next stake and kind of put this in the ground. And then I'll work my way around the tent and do the same thing at the other two corners. Now this tent does have vestibules on the front and back, so I'm going to stake those out next. Now you can see that there are kind of stake out rings on both sides of the vestibule, but if you want to be able to open it, you're only going to want to stake one of these out. So on the front here, I'm just going to stake out the left one, and we'll leave the right one loose so I can open the door and open that flap later. On each of the sides of the tent, there are two more sort of guy strings here that you can unfurl and stake out away from the tent. I'm not going to do that today because I'm not going to leave this tent set up, but if you were expecting heavy rain or heavy wind, it would be a good idea to set these up and stake them out to give the tent a little more staying power in those harsh weather conditions. But there is one loop on the bottom of the rain fly on each side that I am going to kind of pull out and stake down. 
And again, this isn't strictly necessary if you're not expecting any rain or weather, but it will give you more ventilation inside the tent. This tent was pretty easy to set up. I'll tear it down now and see how easy it is to pack it back up. Now one thing I found I don't like about these poles is that the ends come out quite easily. Now there is shock cord there to kind of hold them in place, but once it comes out, it's kind of hard to get it to go back in without causing a problem with getting the end in <laughs> kind of to the pole without the cord kind of being in the way. Now that's just kind of a minor nitpick, but it's happened a few times to me while I was setting up and tearing the tent down. If you want to learn more about this tent, you can find some links down in the video description below. Thanks for watching.